On Friday, March 4th, 2006, I did a video where I gave an update about my post sciatica. Everything felt great on that day. My progress was going accordingly. On Saturday, a day after I did the video, I got a small aftermath of sciatica attack. Basically, on um, Saturday, a day after I did the video, I got a small aftermath of uh, sciatic pain nerve attack. It only lasted about one to two minutes, and it was the same kind of electric buzz feeling that I had when I first had um, sciatic pain, when it first happened. So I decided to take a look at some of the exercises that I did over the week to see what might cause it and I think I know what they are. Before I get into the exercise aspect of this video, I'm going to explain a bit about my x-ray exam. As a non-professional in this topic, this is based on what I'm feeling and what I think I should do. So far, all the exercises that I've done leading to now have worked, with the exception of those two exercises that I'm about to talk um, to that I think don't and will not benefit me in the long run. So basically, my x-ray has shown some mild de degeneration changes. That's the circle part in the report. Based on the research, I found out that I mean, based on my research online, and of course I spoke to my doctor, I found out mild degeneration changes uh, over time is wear and tear of the disc. Joints and bones can occur resulting in degenerative changes to the spine. These generative changes may include decreased disc height, loss of joint cartilage, bony spurning, and thickening of the bone. This condition is known as spinal degeneration. So basically this mild degeneration changes is happening in my L2 and L3 lumbar spine. Um, it's uh, I, I actually it's it's the underlying red in the report, the second thing. My L2 and L3 lumbar spine condition did not just happen like that. Thinking back from junior high school up until college, I played sports. I was always active even when I'm not in school, I was doing some crazy stuff outdoors. In 2000, I, yeah, I think it was 2000, I was in a car accident. Around 2005 or six, I was fixing my house and I messed up my back. So it, it's like a cumulative stuff that adds up leading to this. Looking back, I don't regret any of them to tell you the truth, with the exception of the car accident. But stuff happened. I enjoy every activities that I did, so that's the price I got. My doctor says that I'm one of the lucky ones because my L2 and L3 are rebuilding themselves, but a bit too much. Something like that. That's not his exact word, but that's how I interpret it. In any event, while the bones are trying to fix or rebuilding themselves, aka osteoblast, the bones are pinching the nerves, which are causing the sciatica. My body is creating too much bone in the L2 and L3, trying to fix themselves. So it's not severe enough where I need surgery. However, I must take precaution not to trigger the, the spine to hit the nerves that branch out of them, which will trigger the pain that will run down my leg again. Now, in terms of the exercises that I'm, I will 
eliminate completely in my routine are the following. One, deadlift. Actually, it's three, it might be just two. One, deadlift. Two, regular squats. Three, T-ball roll. The deadlift, well, the deadlift, I scratched that out my routine about a year ago because I was getting some signs that it was not beneficial to me. Um, so I sort of stopped it way long before my sciatica. But I wanted to mention it because I'm telling people what I'm scratching out of my routine so far. If there's other that uh, will happen, if other exercise that I do and I'm seeing some sign that it's triggering my spine, I will stop them also. But for now, these are the three ones. For the deadlift, when I used to do them, my PL was around 270, 280. So, uh, so basically, deadlift is completely out of my routine. Never doing de deadlifts. The second one is regular squats. The reason I'm, I'm taking it out is because I realized that on Thursday, it was the first time since my sciatic problem um, that I did it. I did regular squat with some weights. My center of gravity was working too much, which may affect and compromise the spine. Even though I kept my core tight and I tried to keep all the weight on my heel, I don't think it's enough. Right now, at my age, I'm too vulnerable to be injured and it may take me out of commission completely. And I think that uh, is one of the reasons that uh, I had that small effect, I mean after effect of sciatica on Saturday. I, it didn't last long, but it was long enough for me to analyze uh, what I did that week that may cause it. This is one pain I do not want to experience ever again. Instead of regular squats, I will do some split squats and some other things that um, I do sometimes to do for my quads and glutes. And of course, I will do them with lighter with light. I will do them with lighter loads. By doing these other advanced squats, the load will not be concentrated right on my spine. The load will shift and spread out. Even though I will have some sort of a barbell on my back, but the load will spread out. It will not really concentrate right down my spine. This new gym, you know, I started a new gym on January. Um, I just they just purchased. Um, I think yeah, yesterday I saw uh, hack squat. <laughs> so uh, because of my back. Because my back will be leaning against the pad, I think I can use it as well. And of course, with lighter load and more reps. If later on I find problem with this substitution, I will eliminate them as well. But for now, I think they will be just fine. One thing that I was doing weeks prior of doing squats uh, last week was static squat. I was leaning against the wall in a squatting position without any weight, just by the just body weight. It has become very easy for me. So now I will be adding weight on my quad while I do it and remove the weight as I get tired. So for now that will be the substitution for regular squatting uh, for regular weighted squats. Instead of putting the weight on my trap, which the load will transfer right down my spine, instead it will skip my spine completely and be right on my quads. That's the substitution for regular weighted squats. Now, the T-ball row. The T-ball row is not a big deal because there are plenty of other substitutions for it. This one in particular is out of my routine completely from now on. I did it last week as well since my post sciatica. I like um, I like to do this particular one because I get my core engaged. As you can see, the ball is right in the center of me, which means my spine will be involved with, uh, with this type of exercise. Instead of putting the ball between my legs, I can do single arm row, one arm at a time. Same rowing motion, but one arm at a time. My core will remain engaged, but the weight will, not, uh, the weight will be shifted on the side at the same time. 
and and I think uh, that might be better for me instead of having the weight um, between my legs. Another thing I sometimes do, which is definitely better, is barbell bend four. I've done this many times. My abdominal is fixed on the bench, which provides extra support and safety for my spine. I definitely cannot go wrong with this one. So this one, the bench bell, uh, the barbell bench row is uh, the one I will definitely keep doing, and it will be the substitution for the T-ball row. So this is my latest on my sciatica, and I felt that uh, I should do this video for those who have been asking me some questions about it. Like I said, in some of my uh, sciatica videos and some, uh, what is this, uh, Instagram posts, these are my experience. I'm not a doctor. So you have to get your own x-ray and see what is causing your sciatic nerve pain. Some people may need surgery to remove the bone spur. That's the, the extra bone that, uh, that are growing on the spine. Others, like me, may, need, uh, may not need surgery, but treatment, such as physical therapy. And there are others that uh, may need steroid shot twice a year to alleviate the pain. And of course, everyone have to try have to try their best not to trigger the spine to hit the nerve, which means that you have to pay a lot of attention to your everyday activities. By knowing some of your everyday movements, you can pinpoint what you should and should not do to not have the nerve pain. So this is my latest, and I hope this video helps. And if you have any question, and if you feel like there's more uh, exercise that I can do to substitute some of those exercises that I've eliminated, please let me know. Um, please subscribe, like, and share. Thanks for watching.